In the previous video, I was able to get all the, the bilge and waterline routing set up, the, uh, the cable management through the valleys and zip tied and kind of loomed up. Got these brackets made <clears throat> for the coil packs, the, uh, the upright switch so that the ski will run if it's in the upright position, the regulator rectifier mounted onto these uh, existing tabs that I built for the ECU and essentially brand box. So it's uh, all of the essential wiring harness is officially in its place and complete. The stuff that I have going on here is gonna be for the accessories for like LEDs and uh, if I do a Raspberry Pi with like a, a capacitive style touchscreen for like GPS and radio and all that other stuff, that's gonna be after the fact, after it's, it's running and uh, doing all the choo-choo noises and uh, yeah, scaring people. But in this video, I'm gonna get the seat situated here, get that fuel cell right there, oriented right here in like some sort of mount and uh, raise that up to a, a position that feels right. And then once I take it out for a spin, I'll know if the seating position's too high or too low. And then I can adjust this up and down from there so that I actually have a, uh, uh, a proper foundation for when I build my fuel cell that's gonna go right here. So I know how high to build the fuel cell and if it needs to uh, go forward or backward, this, that, and the other. So uh, right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get started on getting the seat and fuel cell mounted in its location temporarily. And then after that, I have to work on getting the reverse bucket installed because uh, that's something I totally forgot about. I'm gonna lop these two uh, tabs off here figure out where they need to go and get the spacing correct. And then uh, probably hit up Minijet for one of those reverse bucket levers that they sell that look real decent. So this guy goes just like so and pivots up and then down and then redirects the water down into this bucket that way so that you have reverse. It's a whole lot simpler than a automatic or manual transmission in a vehicle, so. All right, uh, I'll get started on that position stuff right now. template for the fuel cell has been built to the right height, which is two and three quarter inches off from this stringer. Um, basically, I should probably calculate the volume of what this is gonna be at two and three quarters inch off the stringer. And then uh, I guess that's four and three quarter inch off the stringer there at the very bottom where it goes down into a V, goes across and then comes back up. So I'll, uh, I'll try and calculate that before I do any welding because if it's not the right volume, then it doesn't make sense to do the fuel cell there anyway, but pretty sure it should work. But uh, going to get the seat mounted into the board here with uh, two pieces of aluminum, aluminum that go across here and then a hole on each side so that I can use drywall screws to secure it. Cardboard to center punch through it and then locate the first hole and then uh, go from there.
And then I'll just find a piece of wood that's pretty thin so that I can mount the chair to the wood and the wood to the wood so that I don't get a uh, ejecto cedo cuz. Got the uh, template cut out. I'm gonna put it in here and uh, help visualize. Let me even see that. Yeah. To help visualize what the fuel cell is gonna look like, it's gonna bridge the stringer at about this point right, right here. And then it's gonna drop down into the V of the hole and then be about this big all the way and then V up to the other side. And it's gonna protrude all the way to the front like so. So, uh, Hopefully that'll be enough volume, but, and then off the back of it as well, there's going to be a little box that comes off that's going to sit in this corner here so that I can fill it up and it's going to come up a little bit. So that'll be another two to three gallons. piece of wood and the seat has the wood on it so that it'll make it easier to put it down for the short term. Alrighty, now I just gotta get the fuel cell in. Not proud of this, but gonna have to take a flared fitting for, uh, for I believe, air and uh, cut it off to make this work so that I can bridge these two pieces of uh, hose together. So, I'm gonna get that done. All right, this is why you're supposed to have the right tools for the job. And I don't have the right tools for the job. So, uh, getting this, uh, this pipe that's a little bit too fat for the inside diameter of this tube into the hole was, uh, um, was a difficult job. So, that took like 45 minutes and I don't know what, I guess this, uh, this fuel line is designed to not expand under high pressure, which is kind of the whole point of it. But Jesus, it was impossible to get this little pipe in there just so that I could lengthen this thing so that I could have a, enough of a, a little bit of length here so that I could extend the, the rail to the fuel pump. But all right, I'm gonna install this now. I'm sick of looking at fuel line. Okay, so there's my cockpit. It's a giant fuel filler valve just chilling next to me. 
was able to drill a hole in the wood right here to get the, the front of the ratchet strap to go over the fuel cell. And then on the back here, I was able to get a little, uh, a little tab from my drawer of random things from Frank's house. Uh, screwed in there, so it's uh, it's almost kind of legit the way it's set up. It almost feels like this belongs next to me. I might have to leave it there and fill it up with Gatorade and then just drink it while I'm driving. All right, uh, I'm gonna start working on the reverse bucket now. All right, so this is the ride plate where the reverse bucket goes onto on these two tabs here and for it to fit down in there and also protect the jet pump housing for a little bit added layer of uh, kind of security while I'm ripping around. Now my dad cut the uh, cut these pieces off here with a bandsaw at his job. So it's real precise and looks good. So uh, video of him doing that here. Gonna set it up and mill this a little bit. And then take a 30 second off of these two ends. All right, so uh, my dad was able to make short work of that. And uh, this definitely would have taken me like three hours to do with a hacksaw and using a butter knife. So glad this uh, turned out pretty nice. Even uh, kind of like chamfered the edges too, so that it's not sharp. All right, so this is gonna go like so down here. And it's gonna serve two purposes. It is going to both locate the reverse bucket and provide added protection to the jet pump housing. So uh, I'm gonna get this installed, figure out where I need to uh, trim up on the sides because I'm sure uh, a little bit of trimming is gonna be necessary. So probably should have gotten the exact measurements for my dad prior to doing this, but didn't think things through. So I'll do that now. Okay. So that is roughly what it's gonna look like. <clears throat> it's recessed from the bottom of the actual boat, so it's not in line and it's not gonna create drag, or at least I don't believe it is. I, uh, I sent a couple pictures over to Jamie and he said it shouldn't cause issues so long as it's you know at this level and not lower. It uh, does not get in the way of the, uh, of the, uh, the stomp grate. It's just outside of it. And uh, should work. The one thing he did mention, which is a very valid point, is that because this is cast aluminum, it's more likely to break the first time something smashes into it. So uh, I'm gonna get a template of this and bend it on a break once I get some uh, some additional quarter inch aluminum. And uh, the way the wood is set up is essentially how I'm gonna weld tabs on the side here so that it bolts in from the bottom. So it's obviously not gonna be a half inch thick wood or half inch thick aluminum, but it is gonna be braced aluminum that, you know, at least will protect this thing if it gets impacted and not just go straight up into the, the nozzle and rip it off, so. All right, because I don't plan on entering this thing into any NASCAR races, I need the ability to turn right. So 
I gotta figure out why that's not clearing this now. I imagine because this is cocked over this way and it's interfering, but uh, I probably need to shave more off right down here. So I'm gonna do that and then start welding the tabs on. Okay, that's uh, complete, <clears throat> and it looks awful, but that's uh, it's completely fine that it looks awful because this is only an interim solution until I can get uh, some quarter inch plate and then have uh, my dad work with me with the bandsaw like he did in the previous video, and then I'll break, use a metal break so that I can get the bends proper and uh, do this correctly because that looks really bad. But it's okay. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna end this video because there's uh, still a good bit of work left to do to get this cable out of the, uh, the jet ski hole. And here's the, uh, the mechanism that's used to, uh, to pivot. So this would kind of work. This would get mounted on the gunnel and then that tab right there would get mounted below the gunnel. And then this would act as like a big lever, or like a fulcrum for pushing and pulling this reverse bucket open, like so. That was a terrible example. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming together. I just gotta cut this, uh, the reverse bucket cable out of the hole because they use 14 pounds of marine epoxy on every fitting. So uh, yeah. Well, this video is getting long, so I'm gonna shorten it up and uh, this, uh, this little project's done. And this turns freely now. So that's all I was wanting, but all right, until next time.